Oh, yes, indeed. Oh. Here we go. I'll see you on the other side after I've pressed play on this little monkey. Welcome to another episode of The Good Listening To Show. Your life and times with me, Chris Grimes. The storytelling show that features The Clearing, where all good questions come to get asked and all good stories come to be told. And where all my guests have two things in common. They're all creative individuals and all with an interesting story to tell. There are some lovely storytelling metaphors. A clearing, a tree, a juicy storytelling exercise called 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, some alchemy, some gold, a cheeky bit of Shakespeare, and a cake. So it's all to play for. So yes, welcome to the Good Listening To Show, your life and times with me, Chris Grimes. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. Oh, yes, indeedy doody. Welcome, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, gen min, 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 to what is, in fact, a bit of a, if you don't mind this expression, a bit of a snotty zoom hole. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll pardon that particular expression, I'm full of cold, not going to lie to you, but I'm delighted to have a wonderful, absolute gentleman of a, of a human being, Mr. Mark Story in the Good Listening to Clearing. Hurrah! Hello, Chris. Hello. Hello, Mark. I've been very, very excited to talk to you because you've got the surname that's just going to keep on giving and everything we're just about to witter on about, which is all about storytelling, and you've turned up with the right surname and everything. The surname says it all. And yeah, Chris, I've noticed since we started talking about about doing this, you are now attracting some real celebrities. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've only got my name going for me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you've been very warm, supportive, generous and, and you know, really kind. And indeed, you've, you've nudged me along very helpfully. So sincerely, you are indeed a celebrity to me anyway. You're famous in our own lunchtime. We've walked the West Highland Way in Scotland. I was trying to work out whether it was three or four times together. Three times. And so let the fourth be with us for the next time, <laughs> obviously. So, yes, we've walked the West Highland Way and uh, you've been working for New Cross Healthcare. Uh, we don't have to just talk about work today, obviously. And I've been working for Dave Stewart as his lead coach and sort of Sherpa with a flip chart. And, and we just connected really, really well. And uh, yes. indeed, you know, you have a lovely story to tell. I know you work within leadership development, but also you're a band member as well. You're in The Broken Men. In The Broken Men, yeah. Weekend rock star. That's cool. <laughs> and you've got, a, you've got a lovely sort of cottage awning over your head for those that are watching on Facebook as well. So, yes. So I, I live in an old smithy. This is the, this is the old smithy. So there was a, a furnace just over there. It's now a, a wood burner. And um, yeah, this is where horses would have been shod and, yes. and smiths would have been blacked, I guess. By the way, I can't resist the joke, by the way, as you've, I had no idea you were going to be talking to me from a smithy, but uh, because we're in learning and development, the idea that I, I went for a criteria-based interview recently for the job as a blacksmith, and they said, have you ever shooed a horse? And I said, no, but I once told a donkey to fuck off. <clears throat> thank you very much so i had no idea i managed to segue that joke in but anyway you're extremely welcome this is the life and times with me chris grimes you are mark story and we'll um take you through the curated journey of what is a clearing like for you then there'll be a tree as usual we'll shake your tree see which storytelling apples fall out and then it's all to play for because we've got some alchemy some gold a delicious storytelling exercise that actually we both know we got from dave stewart our mutual uh, great friend the construct of which is called 54321, which we'll unpack. And I'm to this day very grateful uh, to Dave to in introducing that exercise to me and also to you as well. Yeah, brilliant. And then we've got a squirrel, uh, a cheeky bit of Shakespeare and a cake. So it's absolutely all to play for. So um, first question, which you may not be expecting and sincerely welcome. Um, how's morale? What's your story of the day, please, Mark Story? So morale is uh, is very good, actually. Um, so yeah, generally things are very good. Uh, lockdown experience uh, has been largely unscathed. I think there's there's lots of people that have been worse off than either myself or people that I know of or uh, the business that I work for. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, yeah, so feeling very grateful, uh, very lucky about that. And um, yeah. Uh, uh, I've moved in in lockdown, so I'm now living in this beautiful place, uh, and that's that's a really lovely thing too. So on the whole, morale is good. 
and of course it's accentuated for being here chris as well <laughs> well hey and also are you living the hybrid dream how much of your work is now in person and how much of it is remote so we are we've adopted blended blended working as a as a company uh, i'm predominantly home based but uh, i met up with uh, a team last week uh, I'm going to be meeting up with the team this week. So, yeah, it's a, a, a kind of a bit of a mix, really. Uh, and it's the same with the rest of the company. So a, a mix. And, and excuse my geography, but part of it is based in Bristol. Is that right still? Yeah. So we've got a, a big centre in, uh, in Bristol. Um, I'm based in Cornwall. So I've lived down in Cornwall for the last 20, 21 years, I think. And um, yeah, so Bristol is is one of our main hubs, but the Southwest is is the, the spiritual home of the company. And it's called New Cross Healthcare. And what's quite impressive in your journey of, of the pandemic as well is you've actually created a, a world called New Cross World, which you know, you're very welcome to tell us about as well, which is something I know you're particularly proud of. And I thought was incredibly impressive when you gave me a cursorily good look at it. Yes, so uh, the New Cross World, so we're predominantly responsible for the uh, the training and development of our eight and a half thousand, nine thousand healthcare staff. And uh, the New Cross World sits within an app that they use to, to manage their, their relationship with us, their, their lives with us. And um, uh, and it's their center for learning. So it's a it's a 3D uh, island. Uh, it's got helicopters and, and vans and lorries and, and so on. Uh, and there's buildings in there that you can click on and they represent the, the care environments that we provide staff into. Uh, and when you click onto a building, uh, it invites you to equip yourself with the skills that you need to work in that care environment. So it might be a care home or a prison or a school or a GP surgery or a hospital. Uh, and all within, all within the app, you can, in an engaging way, you can develop your career by, by working in more care environments. And you can add value to your uh, to those environments by equipping yourselves with more skills. Yes. So yes. yeah, we're we're very happy with it. Very very pleased with it. And if you're just outside your world, looking in through a URL, is it possible just to get in there and have a look, or have you got to be connected to New Cross Healthcare? You've got to be connected to New Cross Healthcare. So I do have uh, an example on the uh, on the web. Um, I'd, can I, can I show you quickly? Is that is that well, what, what we can do? Because this is mostly a podcast space that's going to be brought into UK Health Radio. We'll share mm -hmm. the links afterwards, and there'll be a deliberate invitation to go deep. Um, and then, as we go towards the end, there'll be a you know there you can certainly show it. But this is this is although we're doing it as a multimedia thing, this is much more of a soundscape. Um, yeah. If we were to take time to look at something now, that would be with the best will in the world, slightly dull for a listener. I would have thought. Um, that's very true. Yeah. So there will be an invitation to go as deep as you like on your own URLs, uh, Vicar, at the very end as well. Lovely. Thanks, Chris. But it does sound like a very impressive sort of avatar fueled um, way of really finding a bit of 3D connection to how you manage your own healthcare needs and, and those that you service. Mm. Yeah. So our, our mission as a team is to, is to find ways in which we can use technology to enhance people's learning. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a lovely mission to have. So how do we how do we equip somebody to be able to manage somebody's tracheostomy, for example, um, and and get them to a point where they're they're turning up and and familiar with it um, at least, so they can be shown on site or you know uh, given additional support and so on when they're actually doing it. Uh, but how can we get them as close as possible to that? So you think of simulators for airline pilots, for example. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of trying to create a real life environment to get people up that learning curve. That's our, that's our objective. And does it go as deep and as immersive as uh, virtual reality? So you're putting on a virtual reality headset as well. So we're moving into virtual reality quite significantly as an organization. Um, and we're exploring now how we can, how we can leverage uh, to use a term, leverage uh, virtual reality and I'll, lever and I'll leverage you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, in in the learning experience. So so watch this space, Chris. With goggles akimbo, which is lovely. <laughs> um, yes, and and the, the context in which we did walk the West Highland Way was, was the most you know enjoyable you know, several days of my working life almost because it's just so amazing to be able to go along the West Highland Way for a sort of four day, three night, or, or maybe the other way round journey. 
where you take a day bag for the day. And, and it's just wonderful how the group find a rhythm. And we were working with, you know, New Cross Healthcare and your colleagues uh, in a sort of leadership team capacity. And it was just the most wonderful thing to be able to do. It was a wonderful thing. And yeah, of course, it was wonderful to have yourself there as a, as a coach to walk alongside our, our, uh, our learners. Um, but yeah, what a great company that I work for that gave me the freedom to, to be able to do something like that. So take people away for a week, essentially, uh, and allow them to walk and think. I mean, how often, not just in your working life, but in your life, Yes. Do you get that opportunity and not just to think, but to have your your thoughts listened to and then played back to you uh, through somebody like yourself, Chris. It's yeah. And and then the masterclasses, of course, the, the I am Spartacus. Hey, uh, up the, up the devil's the staircase, part. getting people to bark at Ben Nevis. I am yeah. Spartacus. Lovely. Yeah. So I think they're, they're memorable moments that will stay with people for forever. And a, a big sort of shout out to Dave Stewart as well, who was one of my first podcast guests, actually. So do look up the Dave Stewart episode as well. I did watch the Dave Stewart episode. Yes, very good. And of course, the lovely thing is you can watch and listen. And indeed, thank you for doing that too. So yes, um, welcome. Let's get you going then. And by the way, there's a lovely connection. And I suppose um, the word is synergy, but it's not always the right one to use. But because of what the fact this is also in the UK health radio space and the fact that New Cross Healthcare are all about immersive um, care, I mean, by all means, you know, riff a bit, about, a bit more about that if you'd like to as well as we go through. So... That to the side, let's get you on the curated journey of your life and times with Miss me, Chris yes. Grimes. This is now the man behind the awesome pants that you are. So, Mark Story, let's introduce you to a clearing, first of all. And again, sincerely, thank you for having the right surname for everything we're about to talk about. <laughs> it's all about the story. So, uh, Mark Story, what is a clearing like for you, metaphorically or literally? Where do you go to get clutter-free and able to think? So, nature would be the the place um so out walking uh generally coastlines i i love the cornish coastline so anywhere that i can be near water but in uh in nature um so yeah just that kind of you know that coastline moment where where the the water meets the land i love that wonderful scape you've described do you want to get more specific about where where particularly on the cornish coastline we can end up parked up because i'm going to arrive with a tree shortly at your clearing so there is actually a bench in a place called chapel porth and uh it sits right on the the cliff top uh and this bench is is so high that your legs dangle from it um and and the the ground slopes away just in front of you and then drops down to the sea so when you sit on this bench and you look at a certain uh level um it looks as though you're just floating in the middle of the ocean and it's so there's no land it's just open expanse and a, a friend of mine took me up there a few years ago and sat me down and said right imagine and if you ever have any problems in life come and sit on this bench and you'll realize the insignificance of them so so that particular bench i think is is where i'm imagining myself to be Oh, gosh, I hope we're going to cause a bit of a touristic feeding frenzy of <laughs> people ga galloping, stampeding towards that bench. Did yeah, you say stay away, it's my bench. Stay away, it's Mark's bench. Did you say Chapel Porth, did you say? Chapel Porth, yeah. Wow. And thank you for being that specific. I'm really glad I drilled down to that extra bit of detail. So here we are. Wow, I love the fact that you've probably got to be quite careful how you get up from that bench. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pins and needles, yeah. And then totter <laughs> off the cliff incoming and splosh if it doesn't go well so um, i'm going to arrive a, a bit waiting for godot-esque now because of my sort of acting and theater backgrounds so this is why i arrive with a tree um next to your wonderful bench that you've been very specific and particular about at chapel porth and i'm going to shake your tree to see which apples fall out now and do you normally like to contemplate life nature the universe alone there so am i intruding or do you like to go there with people so i would describe myself as an ambivert Chris, in that I, I love being on my own and I love being with people. And when I have too much of one, I need the other. And then, yeah, so I, I kind of pendulum swing between the two. Did you say uh, an am lovely word? You've educated my ambivert. ambivert, yeah, an ambivert. ambivert. So not an introvert, not an extrovert. I, I get energy from both, but after a while I lose energy uh, in both as well. 
which now explains why you kept walking away from me during the West Ham. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, that's not the reason, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it was the smell. We, we all know that. That's all good. So anyway, thank you for that word. I seriously did not know the word ambivert until just now. So thank you for that. Mm. So um, I'm now here with a tree and we're going to shake your tree. And thank you for this second bit of preparation where you've thought about, you've had five minutes to have thought about uh, Mark's story, four things that have shaped you, three things that inspire you, and then two things that never fail, a bit inspired by the film Up, as I like to call it, where it's, oh, squirrels, you know, what never fails to grab your attention. And then a quirky or unusual fact about you that we couldn't possibly know until you tell us. And I know, by the way, that when we work with Dave Stewart, we do this at what's called the Storytelling Rock. Mm. And it's the most extraordinary exercise, which is where I first experienced it, which just accelerates group cohesion and really um, deepens levels of trust almost immediately. So um, I know you've experienced this before, but I'm really interested to rediscover your story. So over to you. So it, it is a great exercise and I've, I've used it quite a lot internally as well. And uh, yeah, within team settings and so on. And it, it is very powerful. So I would encourage everybody to, to go back and start asking people those questions. So four things that have shaped me. Um, so the first thing, uh, so everybody says friends and family. I'm going to, I'm going to relegate that to a, a later one. Um, I think the first thing is being a story. So this idea of kind of nominative determinism. Uh, so having a, having a role that allows you to, uh, to play out your, your name. Um, I think being a story, whether it's being a story has, has uh, given me a passion for storytelling. Uh, or whether I had a passion for storytelling and I just happened to be a story, I, I don't know. Um, but certainly, uh, certainly storytelling and seeing stories in things uh, is a real important thing uh, that shaped me. So I think, first of all, being a teller of your own story, this idea of being able to sh shape your own narrative. Um, and, and when you look back on your childhood, people will say, oh, I had a great childhood or I had a bad childhood or, or whatever. The, the narrative that you tell yourself, I think, is, is a choice. Everybody's had good and bad. I, I know that there's extremes, um, but I think that the way that you craft your narrative, your own personal narrative, will, will really help shape who you are. If you pull out the good bits and say, well, actually, I had a really, a really good childhood or a really good life, or you, know, you see something as a, uh, as a challenge, uh, to be overcome or a problem that's going to put you down. However you build the narrative around that, I think will will undoubtedly shape you as a person. And I love the fact that you've now moved into an ex-Smiths. So it's a bit like you're a story smith in what you've just described. <laughs> yeah, a story smith, yeah. Yeah, maybe I should be a smith, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> that would be so dull by comparison. No offence to anyone called smith, but I, it's so opposite what you've just described as to who you are and your identity and your your author of your own story i love that yeah and, I, and it, it links to everything so leadership for example i think one of the key leadership roles in an organization or a team is to is to be crafting and shaping the narrative of either what's going on or, or what could be and, and what's happening in the future or what's happened in the past it's owning that narrative and inviting people to share in it um, so you're shaping people's experience of what's what's coming or or what's happened, um, and uh, yeah, it, it it exists everywhere. It absolutely exists everywhere. I think so. Being a story has has allowed me to indulge in in that a little. That's such a great bit of first shapeage. I love that. Mm. Back to you then. So. The second um, so yes, yeah, second. Uh, so family and friends. I've got to. I've got to put family and friends in there. But um, everybody in my life is. So, they're all amazing in their own in their own ways. Whatever part they play in my life, uh, they've all like Shakespeare has got a role to play, um, <laughs> and uh, and I I feel like I'm good at knowing who I need in my life at a particular point. So if I need challenge or support or, uh, you know, reassuring lies or whatever it is, <laughs> I know who I I know who I need to draw on. And there's there's people that I I have in my life, either friends or family, that will that I know fulfill that role. 
Uh, so if I've got a, a particular problem, I might go to uh, my brother or my sister or uh, or uh, friends or uh, or my team or, or whoever it might be. Um, uh, if I've got something to share, something to celebrate, I might go to various people and, and so on. So having that kind of network um, of, uh, of different skills, different roles, different abilities, different impacts on me, I think has yeah, definitely shaped me. I, I just love that delicious expression, reassuring lies. And I also <laughs> am all over the fact that you said, just like Shakespeare, everybody has a role to play. Yeah, I don't know if that's the, the right. No, I shape. love that. You'll know that. <laughs> but if at any point I dab my nose, it's because I've got a terrible cold. It's not. You are. It is a lovely conversation, but it's not that I'm overcome with emotion yet. But I, <laughs> I just need to do a quick part. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Lovely. lovely story smithing. Go you. Number three. Um, so number three is being an optimist. Um, so whenever I do a psychometric assessment, and I, I did one recently, so it's it's in the forefront of my mind. I always come out as being a kind of off the scale optimist and it gets me into loads of trouble. So uh, I will tend to tend to say yes to things or tend to think, well, that'll work out fine. Um, and uh, and then I get into little adventures of, I don't know, capsizing boats or, or whatever it might be. Um, <laughs> But it also allows me to experiment with the idea of what if, you know, what if what if we could actually do that? So what if we could actually build a world that exists in an app that would allow people to manage their skills and careers? What what if we could do that rather than have, you know, just a, a kind of normal thing? Um, and uh, and yeah, a belief that things will generally work out OK. Uh, it can it can, like I say, lead me into trouble uh, and. Uh, again, has has shaped my experiences. So I will move towards things, and they will either be lovely experiences or challenging experiences. But they will be they will be shaping experiences. Oh, again, so lovely and very relatable to the whole mindset of yes and. Just say yes more, and more windows of opportunity will open. More yeah, possibilities yes and. emerge. Yeah. Yeah, a very, a very powerful thing. And I, I know that that's uh, in the uh, improvisation world. That's, yeah. you know, that's a real key thing. But in, in business, and, and my role is head of learning innovation, um, it's, it's a real key thing for us to be expanding and exploring ideas as opposed it's to... It's that to lovely thing of the com combination, as you've just said, of yes and and what if. If you run those in tandem, that's a very uh, optimistic universe in terms of possibilities. Anything is possible. Mm. And also, I'm always intrigued and fascinated by uh, you know the idea of reframing in coaching. I I've discovered something recently where if we feel overwhelmed, where we can spend a day going, oh, what, today, guess what? I've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. We get into a got to universe. And then if you just change the O to an E, oh, guess what? I get to, and then I get to, and then I get to, and then I get to, and the universe just optimizes or becomes yeah. more optimistic. Yeah, crazy powerful, really, really powerful. Those, those small changes can just rewire your brain it's uh yeah and and then shape you uh so getting into the habit of saying get rather than got and 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 instead of but uh are, are very powerful things um so my fourth is uh it's a fairly functional thing and that is traveling so uh when i was 19 um i took a couple of years off uh, between a level and university uh, much to my parents' uh, shame, <laughs> and um, <laughs> but I I intended to spend the first year working and saving to go travelling in the second year. Um, so I spent all year working the first year. I managed to save I think 150 quid <laughs> or something uh, to go travelling for a year. But we still went. So this is the optimist in me. Me and my friend still went. We ended up in East Germany. It, this was 1990. 1990 to 91 so it it had only recently been unified to germany so it was still very much kind of eastern bloc and there were building sites everywhere and that's that's what gave us the, the chance to kind of work our way through um and it was a real experience you know i know that people go to thailand and australia and and you know all over the world uh and and east germany isn't particularly exotic uh, but for an impressionable 19, 20 year old, uh, having that life experience is, yeah, certainly shaping. And I remember coming out of that thinking, 
so my objective going in was, yeah, I'm going to find myself. I'm going to, I'm going to really work out who I am. And, uh, and I came out thinking, yeah, I, I, I know all about myself. Um, and wow, how, how little did I know? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the kind of confidence of youth that I, that I, I knew everything. And, uh, yeah, there is and that lovely uh, adage, isn't there, about when you're a young person of between sort of 16 and 19, leave home now whilst you know everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and that, that was me. So, yeah, a very shaping experience uh, in, in so many ways. But just to see East Germany and, and see a different culture, I think, was uh, was very good. And are you still very connected to your travelling companion and friend of that day? So I am, as it turns out. Yeah, we have a, a weekly Zoom. And uh, and we we generally will read a, a book or something like that, some sort of um, uh, developmental book, and we'll we'll discuss that and talk about how we're growing as people. It's a yeah, it, actually it's a it's a very active relationship, uh, and he's been he's been my best mate for as long as I can remember. I mean, since you know, since I was probably about five. So you're a bit of a factory default resetting for each other. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's been ups and downs, but yeah, on the whole, yes. Yes, as the story plot twists and weaves along. Love that. I'm, I'm really happy that you're still in touch and it was a very profound experience and connecting experience for you both. Mm. So I believe we've brilliantly uh, shaped you in that that's the four things that have shaped you. Yes. And then now uh, we're on to uh, three things that inspire you, Mark's story. So um, the first thing is... I have to say my boss, uh, Tracy O'Kennedy. So, so you've, you've met Tracy. She's been on the, uh, on the walk a couple of times. Now's a good time uh, for me to blow my nose and sound emotional, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, she, she she had, gorgeous. I know. She had an in, injured ankle, I think the first time, and it was a, a bit of a challenge, but you know, still, still managed it. Um, and, uh, and was better on the second time. Um, but I, I want to tell a very quick story about uh, about why, uh, yeah, just to give an example of that inspiration. Um, so a few years ago, I'd only been at the company for a year, maybe. Uh, my dad was taken ill and he was in hospital. Uh, the hospital was, was kind of on my way home-ish. Um, so my commitment was that when I finished work, I'd go and visit him in the hospital. And he was in there for a few months. So it was, you know, I knew that I was in for the for the long haul. And um, and I I said that I said to Tracy, you know, what was going on, and she gave me all the flexibility that I needed and support. You know, if you need to go, just go, and uh, and don't you know, don't worry about work and so on. That will that will keep. Um, and uh, and and that was lovely. But the the next day, so I went to see my dad in the evening. Um, and the next day, uh, Tracy took, took me to one side. She gave me a shoe box. And in that shoe box was uh, a pouch of tobacco and some, some Rizzlers, uh, some uh, snacks like Snicker bars and uh, some multivitamin tablets, uh, some, um, uh, some orange juice, uh, some change for the parking meter and some twiglets, you know, just this kind of little survival pack for... If you're going to the hospital after after work, you're going to need money for parking. You may not have your tea. You may just need a snack. It was the most thoughtful, practical gift that I that I can imagine. And um, uh, yeah, since then I've I've kind of uh, enigmatically said that leadership is a shoebox, and uh, and not and not really not really expanded on it. Um, but now here is my opportunity to expand oh. on, on why I think that's the case. That is just awesome. I'm just letting that yeah. hang there. So just say that again. Leadership is a shoebox. Leadership is a shoebox. And Tracy O'Kennedy is to thank for that shoebox. I, I love the amplification of that too. And, and this is the moment. I love that. Mm. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it was a very special moment. And we'll stick to stick with me forever. Um, my second uh, uh, thing that inspires me is a friend of mine who has now passed away. And I remember talking to you about her, um, uh, a girl called Jo, who actually lived in the village that I've moved to. Um, and uh, and Jo was the complete opposite to me in that she was a very spiritual person. Uh, she trained to be a shaman. Um, she, uh, she would go on um, 
uh, on soul journeys to repair people's souls uh, and speak to spirit guides and, and all of this stuff. And it was just, her world was so far removed from my world, um, but we had a real connection. And, uh, and what, what knowing Joe taught me was about belief that she would be telling me these things about, oh yeah, I, you know, I went and had a conversation with my spirit guide uh, on a soul journey and I, I managed to repair somebody's uh, broken soul. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what to believe, but I don't think, uh, I don't think that belief really comes into it in terms of is it true or not? Is it right or not? Um, so, so what it taught me is rather than to think, well, is it true? You have to think, well, is that belief helpful? Is that belief useful? And if it's helpful and useful, then, then absolutely brilliant. Uh, it, it's not really that important whether it's true or not. It's whether it's of use to you, whether it serves you well. And, and I see that quite often. We talk about, you know, in our line of work, we talk about self-limiting beliefs. Yeah. Um, and, and we might challenge those beliefs to say, well, it's not true. You're, you are pretty good at DIY or uh, you are pretty good at cooking. Um, but actually, I think the question to ask is, does that belief serve you well? Does that belief, uh, is, is it of use to you in your life? That's such a profound mantra. Does it serve you well? And, and so applicable to so many scenarios in our life. Does it serve you well is a really good default mantra. A bit like leadership is a shoebox. I love that. Mm. Does it serve you well? Yeah. And the third thing that inspires me is anybody that has a passion for a thing. Uh, and we meet them all the time. And most people do have a passion for a thing. Um, and to give you an example of, of this, which I think is a lovely example, uh, is my mum. So, uh, so my mum uh, was a French and German teacher. She's, she's German uh, by birth um, and she's retired now. She's 80 years old. She joined the U3A, the University of the Third Age, um, which is an amazing organisation. And she learnt Spanish to the point where she could teach Spanish, French and German. So she'd get a group of her U3A friends around uh, and, and teach them conversational Spanish, French and, and German. But when lockdown hit, she moved effortlessly to Zoom and, and started running those classes as an 80 year old woman over Zoom and got all her friends connected onto Zoom uh, and, and now operates on Zoom. And what an amazing person who's got a passion for a thing and as a result of that passion, will learn the things that it requires of them uh, in order to carry that thing out. And yeah, uh, what a what an inspirational uh, person um, at 80, moving on to Fantastic. And my own parents are very connected to U3 as well. So again, that's really resonant. Mm. And that must have been quite a Spanish teacher who left her when she'd learned Spanish to be able to teach French and German as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's my kind of teacher. Buy one, get three free. I love that. And go your mum. And reading between the lines, is your dad no longer with us, by the way? No, he's not. So he he died about three three years ago, I think. Um, yeah, so after that hospital, he, he kind of, you know, had a prolonged period of illness and uh, and then passed away. Um, but, you know, it was all, it was, it was a very positive, uh, a very positive, or as positive as it could be, if that, yes. if that makes sense. Sometimes um, called a good death, isn't it? Yeah, a good death in that in that we all got to say the things that we that we wanted to say, um, and uh, and that was a that was a lovely opportunity um, and one that perhaps doesn't come come about often. And, and something else I've been wanting to ask you in what you've been saying as well. You know that metaphorical uh, leadership is a shoe box. Do you still have the actual box, or is that just? Of course you do. <laughs> lovely, nice. Um, Brilliant. So now we're on to two things that never fail to grab your attention. Oh, squirrels. So, uh, so truth is the first one. So if you reveal a truth to me, uh, then that will absolutely get my attention. So quite often when people talk, they'll, they'll talk around a thing. And I'm not, I'm not talking about just beating around the bush. I'm talking about 
getting the thing out that you really want to say. And, uh, and I think conversations get much more interesting when people are, are brave enough to be vulnerable and reveal a truth. So a thing that they might, they might think is a bit shameful or that they're a bit embarrassed about or that they don't know how it's going to land. Uh, I think they're always the most uh, attention grabbing uh, conversations to have. Um, and it's hard, it's, it's hard to apply that. Uh, and I find, uh, I see difficulty in people uh, applying it too. Um, so it's a, it's a skill. Uh, I think it's a characteristic of, of some people as well, but it certainly makes for the, for the best conversations I would find. And if I may say, Chris, it also requires good listening skills to be able to, to pull that out. Your the listening is kind of sponging something out of people, uh, which of course I think you're particularly uh, adept at. So, um, so yeah, people revealing truth, which may be about people demonstrating listening skills. Wonderfully put, and thank you for that generous feedback as well. Mm. Really appreciated. Um, Yes, and, this, and the second thing that would grab my attention is metaphors. I love a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, a man after my own heart. I'm Captain yeah. Analogy in metaphor, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, and I find it in, in people that I connect to most, and it, it's only something that I've, I've recently really been aware of, uh, that we're talking in metaphors all the time. You know, we're talking about things orbiting us and, and we're mixing all these metaphors up, but know exactly where we are. Uh, I think often the best way of explaining something is to explain something else that it's like um, and, uh, and paint that picture. So, yeah, I, I love a good metaphor and, um, and, and I, I like people who like metaphors as well so, <laughs> or, or just naturally use them. I just, I just I find myself being able to hook onto them a lot better than, than real life. And that could be the absolute root cause of why we do connect so immediately when we do, because we are Captain Analogy and Metaphor together, which is just great. <laughs> <laughs> I will pull through the conversation. Sorry, if, I'm, if I cough and snort, forgive oh, you're me. you suffering, yeah. Um, but this is great. And that's you're, you're shaping this beautifully, by the way. And now one quirky or unusual fact about you, Mark's story, we, could, we couldn't possibly know until you tell us. So I have to think about this because I've done this exercise quite a few times. So uh, I get asked that question a lot um, and have to reveal that question. Um, so I'm going to, I don't even know if this is unusual, uh, but I'm going to go with, I can clap with one hand. Oh! So, so that... You know, the kind of philosophical question of, you know, what noise does a tree make when it uh, falls in the forest and no one's around? And yeah. then what's the sound of one hand clapping? Well, I can I can demonstrate what the sound of one hand clapping is. Let's have it for the soundscape. Can you tr please unleash the beast? And sadly for you, I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> did it make a sound then? Oh, there we go. Not particularly. It did make a very loud sound, Chris. I can't believe that you couldn't hear it. That's, that's something my brother's always been able to do. But so I can hear yours much better than mine. So yeah, maybe unfortunately not... for you, um, I didn't hear that. So it's a bit of comedy for you, and we didn't hear yours, but you heard mine. <laughs> That is a great there quirky unusual fact. I love that. Well, the most unusual thing about it is that only I can hear it. <laughs> yeah, that's even more unusual. And do you remember the twist on the tale of, you know, you just mentioned that philosophical question, if a tree falls over in the forest in the dead of night and there's no one around to, to hear it, does it make a sound? There's a comic version of that. If the same tree in the dead of night falls over and kills a mime artist, does anybody care? <laughs> well, hey, is the joke. Yeah, very good. Uh, OK, so we've we've shaken your tree beautifully and now we're going to stay in the clearing and move away from the tree. And now we're going to talk about alchemy and gold, if we may. And by the way, you're giving me this by the bucket load anyway. But um, when you're at purpose and in flow, Mark Story, what are you most happy doing in what you reveal to the world? So my, uh, I had a couple of thoughts with this. First of all, I love uh, I love doing PowerPoint slides <laughs> <laughs> and and presentations and so on. But um, but really, it's about having rich conversations. I I get totally absorbed in that. Um, so exploring ideas, thoughts, 
just riffing, riffing with people. Um, and it goes back to use of metaphors, the revealing of truth, the storytelling, you know, all of those things. I, I love just immersing myself in that with, with people and, in, and indulging in it. Uh, so learning about them, revealing things about me, getting those things out in the open and, and exploring them um, or, or views about the world or, or thoughts on a thing. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely in conversation. That's my, that's my happy place. I love that. And have you heard the allegory of the diamonds beneath your feet as well, which is linked to alchemy and gold? Do you know what I'm talking about there? Um, no. Anyone in a creative endeavour, the diamonds beneath your feet is another allegory or metaphor about the idea of um, there is a, apocryphally a South African drought farmer. And just to be clear, he's not farming drought, but his land is going to drought. Yeah. And every day he's opening up his newspaper and getting slightly bitter and twisted and envious and jealous in the sort of grass is always green away because everybody in the distance seems to be prospecting for diamonds in South Africa and getting rich, a bit like the Californian gold rush. So on the fateful day, our heroic protagonist and, and tragedy uh, hero um, thinks, right, add enough of this, sells the farmstead and off he goes into the wilderness and to oblivion. The person he sells the farm to picks up a rock the first day of being there, puts it on his mantelpiece. And then a couple of days later, a friend comes around and goes, cool, blimey, that's the biggest diamond I've ever seen. And they start digging beneath their feet. And that becomes apocryphy, the biggest diamond mm -hmm. mine in, in South Africa. So it's an allegory for anyone in any creative endeavour that after all these years of, you know, you're not barking up the wrong tree. This is the diamonds are, you know, we have magic, all of us. And there are diamonds beneath our feet that we are here to reveal. Mm. To the world. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. That um, shall be mine now. <laughs> that shall be mine. Yes, no such thing as original idea. We're all um, we're story hoovers and you're very welcome to it. Wonderful. So um, I believe now we've spoken about Alchemy and Gold. It's time to award you with a cake now, Mark Story. So rather than just splotching it in your face, first question for you, and this is a multi-layered cake. Um, what cake would you like and do you like cake? So I do like cake, yeah. Uh, I like all sorts of cake. I think it's mood dependent. Um, but I will go for, uh, what will I go for? Uh, I'll go for a humble flapjack. I think good, wholesome, humble flapjack. Go you. So now the invitation <laughs> is to put a cherry on your humble, wholesome flapjack. And this is a multi-layered flapjack as well. Not just currants, there's mm. all sorts of stuff in there. Um, whereby this is open as a final series of metaphors for you to interpret. And it's, it's deliberately complex so that you can unpack it as you want. But it's stuff like, what's a favourite inspirational quote that's always pulled you towards your future? It could be, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? And also it could be what advice would you proffer to a younger version of yourself? And then finally, and here's where the cheeky bit of Shakespeare comes in, inspired by Shakespeare's All the World's a Stage and All the Men and Women Nearly Players, this is an invitation in the Seven Ages of Man epic scale to talk about legacy and how when all is said and done, Mark's story, you would most like to be remembered. So over to you to interpret your flapjack, please, Bob. So, uh, um, the best bit of advice that I have been given, uh, when I was about 15, I came across a copy of How to Win Friend Friends and Influence People. Um, and it, it really opened my mind to a genre of books and a, um, uh, and a school of thought about self-development and the idea of choosing your mindset um, and I think the best bit of advice is that mindset is a choice um, and it's something that I have to relearn often I have to learn it over and over again to the point I had a had the word choice tattooed on my arm uh, wow. to remind myself of of this most important word uh, choice and it seems to me that my mindset uh, sometimes it's aligned with kind of what I'm experiencing. So I might be experiencing a high and my mindset is a high, and sometimes I'm experiencing a low and my mindset is a low. Uh, but it, it doesn't always uh, work like that. So I've come to the conclusion that my mindset and my experience of life are, are actually separate. Sometimes they align, but that's just that's just by chance, really. Um, so So what happens and what I'm experiencing... Uh, is independent of how I feel about myself and, and the world around me. 
which suggests to me very, very concretely that um, that my mindset is a is a choice that I I have some control over. Um, how I see a thing, how I experience a thing, the narrative that I build around a thing um, is down to me. And sometimes when you're kind of right down there, it's it's the thing that you least feel able to remember. Um, so yeah, having a constant reminder of, of the idea that mindset is a choice uh, is something, um, yeah, I think, I think would be good advice to everybody. I love the fact you've got a physicalization of that as well in the word mm. choice tattooed on your arm. Wow. Yeah, the tattooist was like, you want what? <laughs> <laughs> what you want? Yeah. Because I, I had it upside down and at, at, at an angle. So when I went like that, it would be, you know, I could see it. Yes, it's for you. I love that. And he's like, are you sure? Are you sure you want it like that? You know, <laughs> okay, <laughs> mate, whatever, it's your money. Mm. Yeah, so mindset is a choice, uh, uh, absolutely the best best bit of advice. Love and that. it links to my favorite quote. So I love quotes. Um, I've got lots of quote books and, and for years at a time, I've just dipped in and out of them as kind of bedtime reading. Uh, and there's one book, uh, one of the quote books, it's got a, a, a foreword by uh, Stephen Fry, or he seems to uh, introduce every book. And, um, uh, and it says, it, it may be him, it may not be him, uh, but it says that uh, a quote is a, the kernel of a thought. And, uh, and that's, why I, that's why I like them. Um, that they're just, you know, they're just this kind of concentrated, uh, double concentrated summer fruit squash of, yes. uh, of thoughts. Um, so there's loads of quotes that I, I love. We talked about the uh, uh, publishing a book of poetry is like throwing a rose petal in the Grand Canyon and waiting for the echo. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> but the quote that means the most to me at the moment and links to mindset as a choice is we don't see the world as it is, we see it as we are. Love that. It's a lovely it's quote, a, isn't it? It's a lovely quote. I just love letting that hang there. Just say it one more time, reincorporation. So we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. We're now deliciously at the point of legacy, borrowed from a bit of Shakespeare. How, when all is said and done, Mark's story, would you most, do you think, like to be remembered? So how would I like to be remembered? I think often. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, Often and permanently. <laughs> <laughs> Here no, lies my story. Often I think, about. I think fondly would be would be good. Um, uh, I think if people might introduce a, a a memory of me by, you remember that time when, uh, in a, in a kind of excited way, uh, as opposed to oh god, do you remember that? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I think fondly uh, would be as much as I could ask for um, and yeah that's that's me lovely it's been an absolute joy talking to you and I'm just going to get a tiny bit of lick on in terms of managing the time to curate the end of the conversation if you don't mind being uh, just a little bit quick in where we can find out more about you on the internet and also mention broken men as well I'm sorry we didn't get onto that but that's your band well you can't really find out more about me Generally, so newcrosshealthcare.com, of course, is the organisation that I work for, a uh, great organisation. And uh, and if you go on Facebook, you can search The Broken Men, um, which is the band. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to live in the southwest around Plymouth and uh, the surrounding area, then you might even get to see us live. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I would say they're the two things that you that you should look out for. Uh, New Cross Healthcare, great organisation, and The Broken Men, great band. Of course. And Mark Story, you are a story smith. That was the most wonderful, wonderful conversation. I've sincerely enjoyed myself. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me in The Good Listening to Your Life and Times of Me, Chris Crimes, and the, just, the, the gorgeous, lovely man that is Mark Story. Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, other than thank you very much, Chris. It's been a, a real pleasure. So, ladies and gentlemen, to your good health. Until next time and...
Good night.